America has a prison problem. I know, you don't care how many criminals we lock up, but you pay for it, and it ain't cheap. North Dakota officials know that, so they are trying Norway's method of incarceration, which they call restorative justice. Prisoners are not locked up in jail cells, but in hotel-like rooms. The men you're about to see are serving serious time for serious crimes, even murder. But good behavior got them into this medium security prison in North Dakota. Man, we got puppies and ice cream and flowers, bro. It blows my mind. By giving us this, this cultured approach, allowing us to, to learn and have other programs to do, it gives us a sense that, okay, well, maybe we're not stuck in this little box over here as convict. It's nice to have a real shower with a real shower head and adjustable shower spray, you know, and makes you feel a little more normal. They treat me decent. They treat me like a person. I'm not going to disrespect you because you don't disrespect me. If you had a loved one murdered, would you want the killer? Would you want them to have a life inside prison that looked like this? Or is this too nice? Um, I would, I would want them to be able to live their life as best as they could in, in prison. Because regardless, you still have the stress of being in prison. You still have the stress of losing your family and being separated from family. What would you tell people who look at this, look at the big screen TVs and the nice comfortable bed? What would you tell the critics? That not all of us are bad people in here. And if we follow the rules and we're trying to make ourselves better people and we work towards it, that we should be rewarded a little bit. Let's talk about this. John Osmond is a former director of the South Carolina Department of Corrections, and Larry Levine is a former federal prison inmate and the founder of Wall Street Prison Consultants. Welcome to both of you. Larry, I'll start with you. So you were in prison. What if your jail cell looked like that? Well, my first look at it is, why leave? You can get educational programs while you're there. It's all paid for by the state. When I was in a federal prison in Taft, California, it was a private prison. It was actually very nice. And I used to say, if I could get a bottle of booze, a cell phone, and a couple of women, why leave here? I could stay here forever. That is not your typical prison. And I think that program is the inmates maybe take advantage of the programs there. They'll start trying to game the system. That'll get phased out in the United States. Do you think that's true, John? Do you think it's, a, it's an experiment that's going to fail? I don't think it's an experiment that's necessarily going to fail. I think you'll see, uh, I think you're seeing right now across the country a lot of different states trying a lot of different things. And one of the things that we're learning is if you take hope away from people, they act, they behave like men without hope. So uh, bringing good programming, um, bringing more incentive back into our prison system, I mean, clearly the Truth in sentencing, 85% uh, experiment of the past has failed. We know it's driven up recidivism. We know it's turning more dangerous people back into society. And so learning how to balance um, consequence and punishment with rehabilitation and incentive is, is, is really what North Dakota's doing. Um, you know, not many states could afford to do it to that extreme, but in the end, if it creates safer inmates reentering society, better prepared and to, to reenter society and changed people entering society, seems okay. to me it's probably worth it. So Larry is nodding at that. So what's wrong with with well, treating somebody who's convicted of a drug crime, let's well, say, there's nothing, like a person? There's nothing wrong with it. When the inmates have hope, they have something to look forward to. It gives them a future. It gives them something to drive for, something to strive for. And if the staff treats the inmates with respect, the inmates in turn will treat the staff back with respect. The staff sets the tone in a prison. One of the prisons I was at, a federal prison in Lompoc, California, when the warden was there, everybody knew. They saw his vehicle outside the fence. It set the tone. The staff hated him. In turn, their attitude changed to the inmates. There was just a lot of tension. When he wasn't there, everybody was happy. The staff was happy. The inmates were happy. But in a setting like this, it kind of reintegrates the inmates back into society. 
that's more of a halfway house type setting for somebody mm -hmm. that's in custody. Yeah, but, but one of the guys, John, that um, was interviewed for that story in North Dakota was a convicted killer. He's serving 17 years for murder, and he's staying in this hotel-like room. Is, is, it, is it just a matter of degree? Because in North Dakota, like, they have puppies. Really? Well, they have well, that. Most prison well, systems have, have dogs these days. Um, mo most prisons have, have dog programs, puppies run around. Almost any medium or maximum prison that you'll see, you'll have some type of dog training program, dog reentry program, um, dog rescue program. So that's really not that unusual. I, I will agree most Americans will look at this setting at the at the physical the physical plant and say, hey, this is this is a little bit too far, but but in the end, if it makes the prison safer, if it creates a better prepared uh, citizen re-entering re society and then thereby make society safer again you know I'm, I'm at the age of my life where I just want to I want us to do what works and if this works and if a state can afford to do this then w we ought we ought to pursue what works and what we know doesn't work is taking away hope the truth and sentencing nonsense of the 80s and 90s has has really in, in my opinion in the opinion of many has crippled the federal prison system it's crippled the states where it's implemented including my state and and literally we're putting people back on the street who are more dangerous than they were when they came in prison again mm -hmm. because if you treat human beings if you take away hope from human beings they act like they behave like people with no hope well, and it makes our, here, our, it makes everybody less safe here's the thing larry so this experiment's going on in north dakota right now but the trump administration they want to come down hard on especially people who deal drugs treat them like murderers because the drugs they sell kill people um mr trump has suggested the death penalty for those people he suggested that um due process isn't always a good thing so it's completely the opposite so which way is better is it coming down hard on people you who really, crimes well, in the not. federal system, you have high security, medium, low, then you have the minimum security camps. So what they're doing is they're taking people based on their custody and security level, their history, the amount of time they have to serve, and they're placing them, I guess, in the right prison based on all that criteria. Now, this guy in North Dakota who's a murderer, he would have a public safety factor in the federal system he would be at a medium at least, perhaps a high, a U.S. penitentiary. So you have to create a balance. I mean, I saw when I was at Lompoc, the Watergate burglar, or the Watergate people were there in the 70s. They actually had a little cottage, just like they have in Norway. They're trying to do in North Dakota. They had a special area uh -huh. set aside for these people. I suppose when all these Trump officials get convicted, if they are, Maybe they'll build special little cottages for them, give them special treatment. Larry, Larry, Larry. Um, those are white-collar criminals, right? Well, they so, are. So, they so they're... Minimum security. Minimum security, right. So, so, John, last question for you, and I'll ask you that very same question. Because the Trump administration does want to come down hard on people who break the law. They say that is a deterrent, right? If they think that the death penalty is on the table for them, they won't commit the crime. In your mind, is it better to be well, as tough as possible? on all kinds of criminals or are there levels of I don't know toughness well there you've got to have a lot of tools in your tool bag I mean obviously the setting that we're looking at in South Dakota and in Norway that's not the setting for every you know ultra violent um, hyper violent gang member that that's that are gang members that are you know, filling up prisons in, in my state and in the federal prison system others those guys are going to have to stay behind fences and behind bars I believe the medium security custody inmate I believe the inmate who committed murder in North Dakota who's living in a who's earned his way up to a better setting is still in a medium custody prison which means he's behind one or two fences and he's still you know he's still safe in, in, in case something were to go wrong but but you, you just need you need a, a breadth and depth of of programming and environments to make sure that we're that we're smart that we're not just tough on crime but that we're also smart in recognizing that most of these people 96 percent of those two, two million locked up are coming back into society and the reason for that is 
in large part, we simply can't afford to lock them up for the rest of their lives. We, 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 we can barely afford what we're spending on corrections now in this country. So I, I, don't, I don't see the Trump administration's, you know, wanting, wanting to prosecute uh, violent drug offenders as, as, as contradicting this approach in North Dakota. I think they all work together. Uh, again, in North Dakota and Norway both, those inmates have earned their way up into that that, that setting by, conf by conforming their behavior to societal standards, which is exactly what landed them. Their inability to do that is exactly what landed them in prison to begin with. So we should reward them when they, when they finally decide, hey, I am going to change my behavior. It's time to make a change. Well, it's an interesting conversation, and thanks to both of you, John Osmond, Larry Levine. Appreciate it. Certainly.